Hi, Donna Schwartz here. In this video, I'm going to talk about proper posture for trombone players, both seated and standing. Now, the first thing though, before we get into posture, we need to talk about breathing. If you don't have good posture, you're not going to be able to have proper breathing. So the most important thing is when you're seated or standing, your posture has to be relaxed, your shoulders have to be back. I like to think of a string going from the top of my head to the ceiling that auto automatically lines my head up, my shoulders to my hips. Okay, so you want to always have good posture. Um, when you're seated, it's really important not to sit on the back part of the chair. Already, I kind of feel constricted over here. It's a little harder to take a deep enough breath. So what I always suggest, um, you know, with, for my private students, for my students in school, never use the backs of these chairs. In fact, these chairs are not designed for good posture. They're only designed for stacking up, seriously. So if you find yourself in a situation where this is the chair that you're using the practice in, don't use the back of the chair. I like to sit up on the edge of the chair, believe it or not. It forces me to think about keeping my back aligned, thinking about the string, keeping my shoulders back and relaxed. Very important, not just for trombone players, brass players, but all types of players, woodwind strings, even percussion when they're standing up. It's really important to have that good posture. Okay, um, I want to get into hand position for the trombone before we put it up you know, into a playing position. Trombone is unique. It's the only instrument that uses a slide to get the different notes, okay? But there's a certain way that you have to hold the slide. You don't want a death grip on the slide or you're not going to be moving it. You're going to get a lot of tension in your arm. So let me first deal with the right hand while this is, uh, you know, resting on the floor. With your right hand, you're only going to use three fingers. You're going to use your thumb, your right pointer, and your right middle. And what's going to happen is you're going to take your right middle finger and just rest it on, let me get this up a little bit, and so you're just going to rest it on the bottom part of this brace. And then you're going to put your pointer finger right next to it. Your thumb's going to go on the other side. So essentially, it's going to look, let's see if I can do it in this view, it's going to look like this. Just three fingers. You don't need a fist. If you make a fist, it tightens up your whole arm. Think about it. Make a fist with me. It tightens up your whole arm. I feel tension in my elbow. I feel tension in my shoulder. I feel tension in my wrist. Relax that. Shake it out. Now, three fingers. Just lightly move in three fingers. I don't feel that tension anywhere. Okay, so right hand, just three fingers, as if you're like a little pincer grabbing things. Okay, left hand. Now this is going to be weird <laughs> for some of you. And for some of you with small hands, like me, um, it's going to be a little tricky to do part of it, but um, this, this will work for you. So for trombone players, I say, okay, left hand, ready? Shotgun up. Okay, what does that do? Well, shotgun up. People tend to, you know, when they're playing around shotgun, they tend to do this with their hand. So their thumb is pointed up, and their left hand pointer finger is straight out. And your other three fingers are wrapped around. Well, guess what? Check it out. Shotgun up. <laughs> it's the same thing, right? So you have your thumb is going to go along the back part of this tube, we'll call it. It's just going to go along the back part over here. Okay, it almost, almost rests on this brace over here. Later on, when you become more professional, you're going to have a trombone with a bunch of uh, thumb triggers. So it's really important that you make sure that your thumb is along here. Your left pointer is going to be going up towards the mouthpiece. For some of you, starting out, your finger's not going to reach that. You're going to be like here. Cool, that's fine. Don't worry about it. But as long as you keep your finger in this position, because eventually it's going to be coming up, in, up here. And believe it or not, that helps you to hold up the horn. Okay? Notice my other three fingers wrapped around. Okay, they're wrapped around in between this, this brace and this brace. So that's where your three fingers go. So if I do a little view like this, here's my left hand, like this, shotgun up. Right now it's to the side, really. And then my right hand's over here. From this view, shotgun up, right hand, moves the slide. Uh, let me do a side view, I'll do it this way, so you can see hand position. Shotgun up, right hand. Now, holding up the trombone. You don't hold it, oops, I gotta get this tighter. You don't hold it straight up and down. 
you don't hold the trombone like this. I can immediately feel the strain on my left thumb. You hold it in a V position. I call it a V position, meaning that this slide is like on a diagonal. Let's get this tighter. The slide's on a diagonal this way, almost 45 degrees. This bell is kind of coming out almost on a diagonal, 45 degrees. So you think shotgun up, bring it to your right. Shotgun up, bring it to your right hand. It's going to make it a lot easier to get those slide positions than doing this. I can only stretch out so far. Doing this way, I can stretch out farther. Okay, it's a lot easier. So this is the proper hand position for the trombone. Again, review. Shotgun up. Right hand pincers. Okay? Now, seated position. For almost, I'll say 99% of the uh, instruments, 90, 98%, okay? Saxophones and French horn, you're, you guys are a little different. You're, you're seated at the edge of the chair, okay? Your feet come out, your feet are flat on the floor. I've got a 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle with my knees, okay? Everything's relaxed. And again, to the top half, I'm thinking about string, top of the head to the ceiling. This is my seated posture. Now, I put the trombone in the picture. If I'm in what I call a rest position, I'm basically resting this part of the trombone against my left shoulder, and I'm just holding it like this. If I'm in a, uh, another rest position, we all have different rest positions, us band directors, I would have the trombone um, here, ready, ready to get ready to put it up. If I'm in a playing position, notice my posture hasn't changed. Notice the top half of me has not changed in terms of my head position or anything. And this is my playing position. Slide moves out. I've got good posture. I could breathe. And I could play my music. Okay, now, standing position. Guess what? It's the same thing, except I'm just going to stand with better posture. So I stand up. I'm going to keep my legs, I'm going to keep my feet even. Some people, when they're, when they're soloists and they're playing, um, you know, in symphonies and such, if you, you know, watch Joe Alessi play from the New York Philharmonic, or uh, Christian Lindbergh, phenomenal player, phenomenal sol soloist, they may actually put one foot forward when they're playing. They may. Some people tend to do that. Um, for me, you know, I tend to keep my feet even. You want a good bend in your knees, okay? You don't want to lock your knees out. It, um... It actually provides tension. I just felt that. It provides tension not only in my knees, but um, also in my hips. So you really want to keep a little bit of a bend in your knees, okay? Same position hand-wise. Shotgun up, and then your right hand pincers are over here. And this is your standing playing position. This is great. You can reach things. I can reach the camera right now. <laughs> um, I, I like to be a little silly. Anyway, so this is your standing position when you're playing, okay? And when you're standing and waiting to play, you know, this, this is fine enough. Okay, so, again, to recap, posture is really, really important. You're not going to be able to take a good deep breath if your posture isn't good. You're also not going to be able to play the instrument efficiently or effectively if your hand position is off. I see with a lot of beginning trombone players, um, I see some crazy stuff. I actually see, just make sure the slide's not moving, I see them like doing a, a fist over here and then a fist over here, and I, I think to myself, how are they holding it up? I also see a lot of beginning trombone players tend to rest the instrument on their uh, left shoulder and they do this. Okay, ow. Okay, ow. You're going to get a pain in the neck that way. <laughs> so, um, you know, the kid, you know, the kid doesn't know any better. The teacher didn't tell them, you know, you really don't play like this. You also, you know, you don't play like this. Can you imagine? This is like painful. Um, it's really not that heavy. Okay, this is a fairly light instrument. I got to be uh, honest with you. If you get in the habit of holding it, you know, on a diagonal, not straight up and down, on a diagonal, the weight's going to balance itself and you're going to be able to hold it properly. So this is the proper position. Not this, not this, not this. Okay, it's, it's this, okay? If you like this video, I've got plenty of other videos on my website, www, excuse me, www.donnaschwartzmusic.com. Um, I have videos on posture for saxophones, French horns, uh, trumpets, sound production. 
Um, I'll be putting up a whole bunch of other videos as well. I have performance videos from my three bands in the performance section. And if you like this video, please spread it around. Let people know about my website. If you like the information I'm giving you, sign up for my website. Just provide me with your email address. Every week I send out um, a blog. Each week, lately, I've been featuring each one of the instruments in the concert band, and I provide videos both with classical and jazz music. Um, so, you know, stuff for you to check out. And um, if you provide me with your email address, you're going to get a video and an article on three steps to learning your favorite tunes without reading music. The way I teach is sound before sight. So check that out. Thanks again for stopping by. Have a great day.